birth of the computer and internet began in cotton mills with these looms. You know, in every major development, I think, in the history of America, technology has been at, at, the, at the center of it. Despite 12-hour shifts, the factories offer a new world of opportunity for women. They're reading more, talking more, educating themselves. Yeah, reading books on factory time was against the rules. But we hid books in apron pockets and waste baskets. Oh, and sometimes we pasted poems on our looms to memorize. And for the first time in America, their voices are heard. October 1836. Women from the Lowell Mills gather after work and organize. Their protest against wage cuts is one of the first strikes in U.S. history. And they will win. The mill bosses back down. A generation of young women go on to become teachers, writers, and even college graduates. Harriet Robinson will become a leading suffragette and testify before Congress. They're the first wave in a movement that results in women getting the vote. Their secret meetings at night are only possible with the light from lamps powered by an extraordinary creature. Whale oil opened up the night. And like so many really transformative uh, technological innovations, it expanded human freedom. It created a way for people to get more, do more, and, and achieve more. Crude oil won't be discovered for another 20 years. Until then, America runs on whale oil. The whaling industry helped invent part of the kind of industrial revolution. And the classic American workaholic, <laughs> work around the clock kind of environment, where if you had more light, to keep you going in those dark winter days, um, you could get more done, you could make more money, and you could you know, kind of drive the economy forward. Whales are among the largest creatures to ever live on Earth. to 180 tons and more than 100 feet long. A single whale can produce up to 3,000 gallons of oil. Even today, whale oil is used by NASA. The Hubble Space Telescope runs on it. Whaling is one of the North's biggest industries, bringing in $11 million a year. But the human cost is also high. Half of all ships will eventually be lost at sea. A few men will not take the risk. But it's an opportunity for African Americans. 20,000 free men and escaped slaves take to the seas. John Thompson is a runner from Maryland. I have a family in Philadelphia, oh, but fear yeah. to remain there any longer. Yeah. I thought I would go on a whaling voyage where I stood the least chance of being arrested by slavery. Come on, come on, come on, let's do this. The equal opportunity offered in whaling is ahead of its time. Here, a colored man is only known and looked upon as a man and is promoted in rank according to his ability and skill to perform the same duties as a white man. The whaling industry offered an ex-slave like John Thompson the possibility of social and economic fluidity, mobility, and acceptance in a way, even in the North, that was not possible for black people otherwise. The man on the lookout cried out, there she blows. There were four whales in sight, not more than three fourths of a mile distant. It takes hours to kill them. They use 
state-of-the-art harpoons, invented by runaway slave Louis Temple. The whale can only be killed by lancing it under the fin, which is a work of much skill and practice. A monster, terrible in his fuel, able to shiver the boat in atoms by one stroke of his tail. And yet even the dangers at sea are preferable to the horror of life as a slave. Punishment is savage for those who risk escape, but some will do anything to be free. Eighteen forty one, New Orleans, ground zero for the slave trade. How much? It's auction day, the day every slave fears the most. In the first half of the 19th century, over half a million slaves are sold at auction. It's a business worth $2 billion to the southern economy. Since the cotton boom, the value of slaves has skyrocketed. Now men cost $1,000, women $800, children $500. Solomon Northrup, an educated free man from the north, was kidnapped into slavery. Go, boy, you come over here. He would make us hold up our heads, walk us briskly back and forth, while customers would feel our hands and arms and bodies, make us open up our mouths and show our teeth, precisely as a jockey examines a horse which he is about to barter for or purchase. Scars upon a slave's back were considered evidence of a rebellious or unruly spirit and hurt his sail. Ninety percent of all African Americans are slaves. Four million men, women, and children. We had based this country on everyone having inalienable rights to freedom and equality, and yet we created a system of uh, abject persecution. Slaves are fattened for auction, like livestock. Dark-skinned men are bought for the fields, light-skinned women for the house. Traders lie about their ages, even dye a slave's gray hairs. For the plantation owners, it was like just going to your local supermarket to get sugar or flour. They had become so desensitized to the humanity of the slave that they did not see them as human beings. Buyers demand the most fertile slaves for breeding. The most expensive are light-skinned teenage virgins. Rape is common. Eliza's from a state plantation. She's being sold with her two children, Emily and Randall. In Louisiana, it's illegal for children under 11 to be taken from their parents. Boy, boy, come over here. It happens all the time. You know, 140 years is not a really long time in the context of history. So it's hard for me to believe that blacks didn't have any rights here. They weren't treated as, as human beings. They were treated like animals, essentially. Sir, please. Over half the sales at auction will tear a family apart. If you've ever been eight, to think of being separated from your mother and your father and sold and you'll never see them again. The horror of that, the poignancy of all of that, and yet that's the kind of thing that happened across the South up until the end of slavery. Okay, my final offer. Thousand for that man. Yeah. Nine hundred for that man. That woman there, seven hundred dollars. Please, buy my child. for the last time the faces of their
their dead offspring. Oh but never have I seen on, such an exhibition on, of intense grief as when Eliza was parted from her child. Three miles outside Baltimore heading north, a slave on the run. The risk of capture is high. At most, a thousand a year are successful. Ears cut off, Achilles tendon slashed, branding, all are common punishments if caught. Frederick Douglass has failed twice, but won't let that stop him. Men like Douglass are the South's worst nightmare. He has a better chance than most of passing as a free man. Unlike 80% of slaves, he can read and write. Even in the 21st century, we're only three or four generations away from people that not only could not get paid for their labor, it was against the law for them to read and write, it was against the law for them to marry, it was against the law for them to name their children after themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Long way to go. Take it. Black Americans must carry documents proving they're free or who they belong to. Frederick Douglass has papers borrowed from a friend. Take it. They won't hold up to careful examination. My whole future depended on the decision of this conductor. This moment of time was one of the most anxious I ever experienced. Had he looked closely at the paper, he could not have failed to discover that it called for a very different looking person from myself. Frederick Douglass makes it to New York City and freedom, and becomes a leading figure in the anti-slavery movement. He'll write a best-selling autobiography, meet and debate with Lincoln in the White House. At a time when slaves are barely regarded as people, he will become an icon, a celebrity, the best-known African-American in America. The best hope for escaped slaves is the legendary Underground Railroad tireless efforts of Harriet Tubman. An escaped slave herself, she risks her life returning south again and again to guide others to freedom. A masterful escape artist, Tubman will do anything to avoid capture, even keeping babies quiet with opium. That's a good boy. Harriet Tubman is the Moses of our people. She was a wanted woman. She was a hated woman, reviled by the white South. Just imagine you have gotten out of slavery, you've escaped, and yet you come back. You have the courage and the care about other people to come back into to a hell. <laughs> The South puts a $40,000 reward on her head, but nothing stops her. Come on, y'all. Come on! Move. I'm going to die. Tubman is one of America's first civil rights activists. In the same month she dies, Rosa Parks is born. Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman 
threaten everything the South stands for.